They do one where they uh, the parents get together and they do it in a parking lot for preschool students. Mm. I, have, I even put myself church. on the candy map. I was on the candy map. Yeah. The church over here that. does it. And I think that's why we don't get a lot on the street is because oh. kids go to the church and the parents go to the church and then you just walk around the church gym. It's not quite the same. I'm hoping that whatever we get, we don't get any teenagers who get upset because we don't put enough of the good candy out and TP my lawn. <laughs> teenagers i mean how, that's why you give out toothpaste how how late how, how late in life do you trick or treat you trick or treat as a teen you'd be amazed <laughs> actually i do i do remember um well uh, the in sebastopol it was like there were like cool neighborhoods you know where you get dropped off and like trick or treat and then your parents mm. pick you up later and i remember the year that a friend of mine we were it, it was we were in high school but we weren't driving yet so we were probably freshmen mm -hmm. I remember kind of both of us looking at each other and being like we're a little old <laughs> we're, we, we're, we're a little old now yeah we, we did, could, and it, we that, could and that was it. buy candy that was the end of it. yeah it was just we just sort of felt like we're kind of taking up stuff. i don't remember the last i think maybe sixth grade was the last trick-or-treat uh, i don't really remember fifth, that i don't remember either Fifth grade. After that, no more. I feel like there was things going on at school, at trick or treat times. Mm -hmm. Dances, school, Halloween. I remember dance. my first like, kid. like basketball I my practice. First, I think I remember my first. Was it middle school? Middle school like Halloween party at a friend's house in her basement, and yeah. I do not remember being sad <laughs> that a, I couldn't like trick or treat. Seven in the though. closet and stuff, and it was like, oh, this is bad. I remember I got put in the closet with a boy, and we just stood there and looked at each other, and we're like, oh, this is so dumb. Did you did you, did you know no. each other? Oh, we right. knew each other like casually, and yeah. like we did not make out at all. We we're just like, okay, is this over yet? And it's like, how long do we have to stand here? So, what are you doing after this? <laughs> yeah. You going trick or treating? No. Okay. Yeah. Me neither. Okay. Yeah. Do you get rid of? Anyway, I probably would have made out with him if he wanted to, <laughs> but he didn't. Now you tell him. So. <laughs> well, give him a call. I don't even remember who it was <laughs> anymore. I don't even remember. And he's listening right now, and right. we have him on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Is oh, I'm already at eighty four percent. I better plug in. Hold on. I told you. Shoot. Hold on. This is a universal principle. Yeah. You will, you should never rely on battery power if you've thinking, if you've thought about it. Thinking about it. I'm at seventy five percent. You're I not feel... plugged in. What's that? You're not plugged into power. Not right now. <sighs> I can be. <laughs> I'm not far away from being plugged in, but I'm not I, plugged in. I don't know. It's just universal principle of mine is like if you can plug into power, plug into power. Because I've never had my battery crap out when I was plugged in and charging. But I'm sure I'm being an old man about it. Well, no. If we've moved beyond kerosene-powered laptops, Tom. Kerosene-powered? There were kerosene-powered laptops? Okie dokie. I just... I have the power... Everybody's yeah. got the power now. I got the power now. Sarah was uh, on battery power too. Hmm. Now I'm, I'm plugged in. Got to keep Tom happy. Because <laughs> naggy old Tom <laughs> <laughs> was worried about everybody's battery going out. Now, now we're going to have something weirder happen. Cause I'm... I'm pretty sure that I could get through the show. But you're right. You know what? I'm 100% like sure times. you will now. Well, um, now I really for sure will. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, you can for unplug sure, it sure. and just watch, and then you can plug it back in. It's, <laughs> you really want to test it. There. That's you awesome. know what? I'm going to. All right. All right. Fine. We've. It's literally next to my hand. Yeah, yeah. So the, yeah. Nothing bad's going to happen. That's a responsible test. All right. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. Yeah. Yes. Here we go. What's that? You want to give back some value for the value you get out of Daily Tech News Show? No problem. Just head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support to find out how. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, October 23rd, 2017. I'm Tom Merritt at our DTNS headquarters in L.A. 
And from the beach, AKA Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. Do I do an intro for myself? Yes, you do. That's the new I way. I told me that. Veronica. You did it last time. I don't remember. I'm Veronica Belmont here inside a someone's weird house that I, that I snuck into and they're getting fumigated, maybe? <laughs> Maybe you're Breaking Bad. Maybe I'm in Breaking Bad. podcasting instead of I'm math. I'm Burgundy. I'm on Burgundy. Uh, Roger Chang is here as well to produce the show. Thank you, Roger. You're welcome. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Cisco is buying worldwide communication software provider Broadsoft for $1.9 billion. Once the buyout's finished, Broadsoft employees will become Cisco Unified Communications Technology Group employees under the Applications Group. This story might sound familiar because it's been going on for a while. Samsung is challenging whether it should be fined based on total profit or percentage of profit for infringing Apple's design patents. Judge Lucy Coe of the Northern District of California gave the parties until October 25th to propose a date for a retrial. Still happening. Yeah. Microsoft announced the first 13 backwards compatible original Xbox games for the Xbox One will be available Tuesday, October 24th. The 13 games will be playable by anyone who owns them or available for purchase for $10 in the Xbox digital store. Not all 13 might be available. I was kind of unclear on that, but uh, I don't have any of these. So <laughs> it doesn't really matter to me. And uh, here are some more top stories. Over the weekend, Android Central's Alex Doby, uh, at least he's the first one on Twitter to start talking about this, but a few other people jumped in as well, reported seeing screen burn in or at least some kind of ghosting image retention on the navigation buttons on review units of the Google Pixel 2. So if you made the screen gray, you could still kind of see the faint outline of the navigation buttons down there at the mm -hmm. bottom. Now, Google says it is actively investigating the issue, although OLED screens do tend to get burn in over time, it sh should take months or years, not a week. Yeah, it's not a, especially with review units, you know, it's not the first well, thing yeah, you want. Yeah, you and like, hmm, something wrong with the screen. It, ghosting is usually an LCD problem, not an OLED problem. So a lot of people are mm. assuming that this is burn in. But, even, but burn in doesn't make any sense either at such a short time interval. And I'm, you know, as, as fun as, as it is to throw rotten fruit at companies when they screw up. I imagine Google tested for this kind of thing mm -hmm. with their OLED screens. So I am very interested in what is causing this, whether it's kind of a quirk of the operating system or if it is some kind of ghosting, weird ghosting thing on OLED, which can happen, even though it's rarer. Do you guys or have a guess? actual yes. goose. Because <laughs> it's Halloween coming up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that you now you, you put it that way. That has to be what it is. It's just a Halloween promotion by Google. <laughs> oh, well played, Google. Uh, in other Google news, this is better news anyway, Google's rolling out Pay with Google on Android devices. The feature lets you use credit cards or debit cards that you've already hooked up to Google products like Chrome or Google Pay or Android Pay or YouTube or something where you've purchased something uh, um using a Google product in the past. Pay with Google is currently available with 15 merchants, including Airbnb, StubHub, Postmates, uh, a few companies I'd heard of and a few that I hadn't with more rolling out in the future. Google first announced the Google Pay API feature at its IO event back in May and doesn't take a transaction fee on purchases. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, this is I'm gonna go old man merit on this one and like why are they why do they limit these things to 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 Android? I I, I mean I understand Google wanting you to use Android for their system that's mm -hmm. fine but if I'm on the web and I'm using Postmates or StubHub especially StubHub I could see myself using StubHub on the web yeah. I, why can't I pay with Google Pay there? I, yeah. I find that I'm using PayPal quite a bit for that kind of thing these days, especially online merchants, um, more so maybe than than food stuff. But, you know, it's always good to have other options, but it is kind of annoying for the merchants to have to decide which ones to enable on their sites, probably yeah. decide which is the best to go with. And by the way, I'm not giving Apple Pay a pass on this. I have the same problem with Apple yeah. Pay, too, where it's like, oh, you're not on an iPhone, then you can't use Apple Pay. I'm like, well, why? 
Kaspersky Lab is launching a transparency initiative which will let independent third parties review its source code and business practices. Kaspersky has been accused of allowing its code to be compromised for intelligence gathering. Uh, Kaspersky says it will open three transparency centers in the US, Europe, and Asia, and will allow independent parties to develop security controls for how it processes data uploaded from its customers. It will also expand its bug bounty program to a maximum award of $100,000 up from 5,000. So, this is so. what Kaspersky should do. This is what they should say. But they haven't done it yet. And and a lot of the proof is in the pudding of like, okay, which experts are you going to let look at your source code? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the stronger move would be to just open source old versions of the software that are in, you know, from the time of the controversy. You know, Israel was saying like, hey, uh, vulnerability in Kaspersky software was being used to steal secrets from the NSA. We watched it happen. If Kaspersky said, here, here's the source code for that. Let us show you that we didn't build this in. Uh, but I understand that that doesn't really help with modern stuff. So you want to get people to buy your modern stuff. So you want to give code review, but maybe you don't want to give open source code, although that's more secure. I mean, I, a, a bigger move would be Kaspersky just open sourcing all their stuff and saying, here, validate it, everybody. Are they, are they even redeemable at this point? I mean, yes, do, I think they absolutely you think are. They are really, yeah. I would never buy any of their products. No, I feel like this is a witch hunt. Uh, I, really? I may be wrong. I may be absolutely wrong, but hmm. there is no evidence that Kaspersky has done anything wrong other than be Russian. All along the way, they've said, no, we, we don't cooperate with anyone. You're saying that. The vulnerability yeah. Yeah. was a vulnerability. Software gets vulnerabilities, right? And if people exploit it, that's, you know, well, that can happen. It come. doesn't prove yeah. that they colluded. Right. I want to know what a transparency center looks like. Uh, it would be all glass. <laughs> yeah, you can see right there. I would assume. Well, because it's, it's sort of like, <laughs> yeah. you figure, is it a physical place that we're going to here? Yeah. You know? it's, it's probably like an a, office, yeah. Like a lab? Is it like a call center? Like, I'm sure it it's, like? yeah, I'm sure it's just an office uh, where people yeah. can come in and sit down and be like, okay, we don't we want to let the code out the lab, but you can look at everything here in the transparency center. Also a big, big jump in the bug bounty. I mean, $5,000, yeah. like, eh, $100,000. Yeah. That's interesting. Now you're going to get people looking for bugs. Well, right. and that, that they're trying to show like, no, really, we don't want there to be vulnerabilities. We will pay people who find them. You know, we can't control who finds what. Uh, and so you can see if people say, hey, I found this vulnerability and they didn't want to pay me, so we'll pay you. I, I, I really think Kaspersky is being, put it this way, I'm not ruling out the possibility that Kaspersky is guilty of the things that people are assuming they're guilty of, but it's all assumptions. And it's pretty much all the exact same kind of things that you could accuse any other security company of just happens that Kaspersky is Russian. So people say, oh, well, they're Russian, so they must be doing it. And I, I would like to see, I would like, this This is what I want to see. I want to see people look through their source code independently and say, well, you know what, there's some suspicious things, or I don't know, it seems like it's fine. And it will very much depend on who they get and who they allow to do this. That's what I think. <laughs> yes. Uh, U.S. FBI Director Christopher Wray said the agency was able to unlock encryption on about half of the 14,000 or so dev devices that the FBI targeted in an 11th month period. Now, that smacks of cherry picking when you have an 11 month period instead of a 12 month period. However, Mr. Wray was speaking at the International Association of Chiefs of Police. At a, it's a conference in Philadelphia on Sunday. Uh, he was spinning it as there are 7,000 that we didn't uh, break through the encryption, but works both ways like this is this is a lot of encryption being broken what do you guys i mean we've gone over this topic a bunch of times but encryption is going to happen whether you allow a backdoor or not let's say tomorrow apple just doesn't put encryption on any of their phones that doesn't stop people from encrypting those phones the right? 11 month thing is sort of odd um well, yeah, that's cherry picking. You're saying, you know, I'm wondering, like, if it was a 12 month period, would it be less than half? Would it would they have been able to crack into more of them? Mm -hmm. Possibly because encryption has gotten uh, better implementations over the years. But I definitely I don't know. I you, I, you guys are like, I got nothing. I got, I got nothing. nothing. Sorry. It's, you know, we don't want back doors, right? No, no. Uh 
do we have a list of the like 14,000 device? You know, it's like, okay, well, I mean. I'd be curious the percentage breakdown. Yeah. Yeah. Like what's the span? I mean, for, what if it was 14,000 of the same phone or, you know, how, how many different devices are we talking about here? That's, it's just, it's almost like we need more information. Yeah, we do need more information. And, but in the end, for me, this is the principle that my opinion on this is based on. Anybody who wants to hide something from the government can encrypt it and you can't stop them. It's math. So yeah, there's an argument to be made that if you put a back door uh, on phones, some criminals will not take the proper precautions because, hey, security is hard. Convenience trumps security. Uh, and, and so maybe you'll be able to catch a few more. I'm not convinced that it is the most effective way to go about it, considering that it then weakens security for everybody else for the right, people who right. really do need the assistance to say no you really should be encrypting this it's almost like they don't understand that there are legitimate reasons for security and encryption sometimes yeah. they certainly it don't really, want to admit like, it almost like feels that way to me that they're just like why would you even need this and i'm like yeah. you work for the fbi why would you think we don't need this I, I it's not that they i honestly don't i think they do understand it's just inconvenient for them and well they, they can't have rather. it both ways i mean well, exactly it's, but it's it, it is it is so the the bigger issue that gets raised in this is because it, it's now becoming more of a political issue and with the debate being as kind of you know you know, being framed as, well, we can't catch these bad guys because the Apples and the Googles of the world won't give us the ability to access all these evil people's phones. I mean, if the, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, they, the, the, the discussion gets framed or the debate gets framed in a way where you remove the, you remove the element of everyone else's privacy being, uh, less secure, uh, for the ability for law enforcement to, you know, do what they 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 think they should be able to do uh with people's um personal data yeah well but that assumes that it's like oh okay if you work in law enforcement then you always do everything right and we know that's not true yeah. either yeah well and, and ha having some friends in law enforcement i i get their side of this which is having encryption on everybody's phones makes it harder because then there is no doubt that even the dumbest criminal has their data encrypted uh, and it's harder and harder to break this in as it gets more well implemented. And I'm sympathetic to that. Uh, but my question is always, how if, if all of the phones now have a backdoor, how many more new cases of theft are you going to be dealing with because of that? Because you made it easier to break in. And, and, and how many of these cases that look easy if you were only able to get into the phone would actually pay off. A lot of times you get into the phone and you don't get any intelligence that you couldn't have got otherwise. Granted, cultivating sources and going undercover is way more difficult than having a backdoor into a phone. I totally understand that. Well, speaking of phones, guys, I've got some good news. And that is that the Essential phone just got cheaper by Yay. $200. Woo! The company slashed its price by 200 bucks, making it $499. That's an off contract and unlocked phone. So if you already bought the Essential phone for the previously higher price, you get a friends and family credit. Uh, there's some different... Um, different credits that they have on their website, which is valid through December 15th. So you don't feel like you paid a bunch of money that you didn't have to pay. The deal only applies to customers in the US for now, but the company says they're putting together a deal for Canadian customers as well to follow. As a US customer of the Essential Phone, I would like to say that my review of this changes dramatically at $499. Before I was saying, it's a really good phone, but it's $699. I don't know, at $499, you should definitely consider this phone. If, if $499 was the upper limit of your budget, check out the Essential phone. It is a very well done phone. Uh, the weaknesses around the camera have mostly been fixed by software updates. It's solid, it works well. The fingerprint unlock on the back is super fast. Uh, can't say enough nice things about this phone at $499. However, as a customer who paid $699, Getting $200 to use at your store that has two products that I already own, <laughs> not so much of the benefit Just give me the money me. back. Give me my money back. Yeah, I mean, I give mean, me I know there's going to be more modules coming out. Maybe this will, I'll want to buy one of those with this, but. Give me my money. 
It's different. Like, give me a two hundred dollar gift certificate at the Microsoft store, and I'm like, ah, you know what? There's stuff in there I want. That's cool. Give me two hundred dollars at the essential store. Just yeah. Give me two hundred dollars. Just give me, me two hundred dollars. Give me the cash, cash. please. Cash, I would even please. take it an Amazon credit. Whatever. They wouldn't do that. No, but that's an interesting thought. Is there somebody that the essential phone people would partner with? Like, I don't know, their former Google coworkers, perhaps. Nah, the essential in the pixel are too much competition. That's a Give me the money. Give me the cash, Andy. Oh, to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, don't forget we have Daily Tech Headlines at dailytechheadlines.com. You can uh, subscribe to it as a podcast. You can get it on the Amazon Echo as a flash briefing. And it's also available through the Google Home and on the Anchor app, which you can find at anchor.fm. And that's a look at our top stories. All right, it is a Fan Mail Monday, which means uh, we have a few more of your messages to get through than usual. Uh, so we're going right into that, and we'll talk a little more about each one of them. The first one comes in response to my weekly Patreon column. Last week, uh, my weekly Patreon column was about what I wanted from a music service, which is basically I want to create my own little radio station with rotations, so like, you know, hot hits that wrote that that I can pull in and out faster and then classics that I never change. Uh, T glass wrote iTunes will let you create a folder and then you can add multiple playlists to that folder. Yeah. You can drill into the playlist or play songs from the folders to hear songs from all the playlists in that folder works in iTunes. Not sure if it carries over to the mobile mm. app yeah. and apparently it does not. The only problem with that is iTunes. Yeah. I mean, and, and apparently Spotify has a similar thing. A couple of people wrote in and said, oh, in Spotify, you can create folders and you put your playlist in the folder and then you could shuffle amongst all of them. Uh, I'm like, yeah, but can I do that on the Spotify app? And they're like, oh no, you definitely cannot, cannot do that on the Spotify app. Like, okay, but I, I listen to music on my phone, so I need this to work on my phone for it to work at all. How, how in the world is there a feature to add a folder that won't translate to the app that has all the same that's very bad UI. let me just say folks if you're like oh no this is how you do it on itunes and it syncs over to apple music let me know maybe i'm missing it but yeah uh they just didn't they just didn't feel like enough people use that feature to bother adding it into the app is my guess well they might have a point there <laughs> well and, and this is the thing and i was very clear about this in my column i am probably the only one who wants to do this right <laughs> But it doesn't seem like it should be that difficult of a thing for it to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm so far from so far from the playlist world now. You don't I'm so, so, so I think of, that's the other thing. I love playlists on Spotify, but I will never go back to iTunes, so to me it's just But when you say I love playlists on Spotify, you mean the ones they give you? Both, yeah. I mean, I, I subscribe to user playlists. I subscribe to Spotify playlists. I subscribe to ones they build for me. I make, I sometimes make my own, not very often. Yeah, I'm see. just lazy enough to like, just want to find something close to what I'm looking for. I'm not only swimming against the tide of Tom's one of the only people that wants to manage his own little mini radio station playlist, but <laughs> yeah. also I, people don't want to do playlists anymore. They just, they just want to get the playlists that are recommended. Well, it's 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 kind of like the the reason that people still listen to the radio. It's like yeah. I, I too much choice, and then I'm crippled by it, and then I'm like I don't know what to listen to. I don't even know what I like. But if I just sort of choose a genre, and yeah. I, I'm an Apple Music user, uh, and then it's it's the right kind of music, then I'm happy. I'm actually happier that way. Somehow, I do like that. On choosing Google. my own playlist is like never quite good enough. Mm. I don't. Yeah, I I'm do that sometimes on Google Play Music. I will pick the 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 cheery pick me up music or the Saturday afternoon music. Like Those are pretty good. Yeah, I actually have a weird. Whenever there's a song that I just really like, it's it's a terrible habit. It's like I use a playlist as kind of just a bookmark. So I actually do have a playlist one within Apple Music where I just put stuff that I like want to remember. So it's a it's a useless playlist because it's all over the place. Yeah. Huh. Unless it's just a playlist of like things that I like, but there's no yeah. rhyme or reason to the stuff that's in there. Anyway, it's like big my thanks. Time capsule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little history, little mm -hmm. history book playlist. 
Got another email from Mike Keeper. This is in response to our latest bonus episode this month. We were talking about social networks. Mike says, you didn't mention Google+. Plus. A few people actually noted uh, that they are Google Plus users, and we just breezed right past Google+, Plus, which is alive and well. Uh, in our analyst Slack, Mike wrote, I still use Google+, Plus a lot. There are several active communities that I belong to that are very active and post a lot of comments. I'm not on Facebook, so Google+, Plus is my substitute. I don't care much for Twitter, although I do check it every day briefly just to see what's being posted. I mostly browse for tech news. I rely mainly on you, Tom, to summarize it for me and point me towards the sources to check out in depth. Thanks for all that you do. I I don't know what to make of Google+. Plus. For a long I, time, I defended it. Like, no, there are people there. I see them commenting to me. But these days, I don't see any comments to Google+. Plus. To be fair, I also don't post on Google+, and usually you have to post somewhere to get comments, but... Yeah, it's been a while since I used Google+, with any regularity. It was very active at first, um, and I liked yeah. it. I thought it was, I sort of thought it was like the second coming of social networks, like, yeah, this is what we wanted the whole time. And, uh, and you know what I found was the comments got weirder. They, they didn't yeah. so much fall off, but they became spammy and just sort of like... Totally. I didn't even know who was reading my stuff anymore there. Yeah, I, I belonged to a couple of groups. I belonged to like the podcasters group and, and things like that. And they just got very like super self-promotional. And the comments, like you said, got very, very spammy for me. And maybe this is just our experience as like, you know, being on like the promoted list or whatever it is and, and just being part of a wider audience. Uh, maybe if if you're not like that, it, it it's a lot more tailored to you and, and makes a lot more sense. Um, but I, I don't know if I just didn't set it up correctly or didn't use it properly or stopped using it. I don't know. I totally forgot it existed. I'm sorry I, to say. I feel like it's at it's it's end days friendster orchid kind of situation where there are people using it. If you are a member of that group, you still love it because right. you're all in there having your conversation, mm -hmm. but it no longer has the widespread like cross group use that it used to. Got to go where the people are. Yeah. And there are people on Google+. Plus. And, and yeah, there's there's definitely the Google+, Plus sort of like, hey, wait a second. Like, don't, you know, don't diss the network that I like the best. It works perfectly fine. It's There's nothing wrong with Google+. Plus. I just don't know who I'm going to talk to on it's Google+. It's not Plus filling a days. void for me right now. It's yeah. not It's not doing something for me that I need. And I I'm, guess. I'm, I'm curious what's going to happen to it, too. Like, I'm always like, mm, I don't know where that's going. Is that going to still be around? I don't know. Google don't doesn't know. really seem to have it as a high priority. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't go the way of wave. Hello, DTNS. Coffee shops and libraries are some of my favorite places to work, but I'm not usually able to make those places. So, Coffivity, Coffivity, Coffativity, Coffativity <laughs> plays coffee shop background sounds. A lot of the sounds were recorded in some amazing coffee shops here in Richmond, Virginia. Check it out, Coffivity.com. Coffativity. Coffativity. Coffivity. <laughs> Coffee Yeah, that three times fast. Um, I don't know who this is from, actually. I don't have a name on it's that. It's from Damien. Okay. Yeah. Or no, wait. Da da Damien is in the next one. Sorry. Uh, it's from a ghost. <laughs> it came from a ghost. From a ghost. Um, was I that Coffativity like... playing in the background just there? I think it was. Yes. I felt very relaxed, like I could concentrate. Well, I it's... Really it's Oh, I'm sorry. It's very interesting. It literally does the the background ambient noise of a coffee shop. Desmond, that's my. Oh, I yes. like. Um, I use Nozio, uh, which you can combine lots of different kinds of background noises. So they have a coffee shop one, but then you can combine it with like a rainstorm. So you're like in a in a coffee shop where a rainstorm is happening outside, or you can have like whales. So you'd be like in a coffee shop with or whales, whales. <laughs> or you can be with whales in a rainstorm. That's distracting. Be, yeah, so it's like you can combine all these peaceful things into like a weird abstract like. No, whales are just distracting. You were distracting. distracting. Talk smack on whales. They're beautiful. They make beautiful singing song sound. They're beautiful, but they they do command attention. Mm -hmm. They knock you out of what you, if you <laughs> needed. What are you talking? When are you just like doing stuff and whales distract you, Roger? What is I this? Used... What is this life you have? That you're like, oh, whales. 
I used to work at the. I used to work at Pier Thirty Nine. There was a store that used down. Oh, from they played the play. whales, and it's just it really is distracting. I mean, I, 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 I very lovely animals. animals. Talk about like millennials. He's like just walking down the street and it just what, whales. Have you noticed they never use sounds? There's no EDM or trance music that samples whale noise. Oh, you are going to be so proven wrong in about 30 seconds. I Feedback at dailytechnewshow.com. There is EDM featuring whale sounds. I would I would bet money on that myself. There's, if if you say that something doesn't exist, someone will find it. Yeah. Someone's going to make cool. it. Watch it. Someone's going to make it. They're going to take a dead mouse track and they're going to drop humpback whales all over it. All right, let's let's get to our our last message here, which actually has some useful information. <laughs> Not the confitivity itself wasn't useful. That was very um, useful. Yeah, uh, Damien, this is Damien now. It was Desmond before. This is Damien. Damien said Tom mentioned two factor key generators are stuck to a phone. LastPass's key generator can back the keys up to your LastPass account, so if you move phones, you just restore it. Uh, several other people pointed out that Authy has cloud syncing as well, and I found out Google Authenticator can be set up on multiple devices if you start from scratch. Cool. Hmm. Hmm. I have have so you guys not run into that? Um, hold on. Where you need? To a phone. Yeah, that happened to me with the um the Authenticator for for Blizzard actually the uh. The, the Blizzard Authenticator gave me a little hard time when I one time when I switched phones, but that's whenever really I test time. a new phone, yeah. like the essential phone, I'm always like, oh crap! I now I have to, you know, my authenticator's on the other phone. Um, so you, I'm, here's the thing, though: anytime you do this, you are weakening the strength of the authenticator because the idea is it's mm. something you have and no one else can have, and as soon as you've made two of them, well, now you can have one, but somebody else could possibly have the other one. That's true. Uh, unless you're wiping your phone, I mean, it should. It sh it's almost like it should know that the phone, another phone, has been cleared out. Yeah. That that. And though, that I mean, is yeah. Authorized. Somehow. Last pass, uh, but if your phone got stolen, you know, I don't know. Well, if my phone got stolen, I would do a remote wipe. Maybe they got to it before you got to the wipe before you realized. <laughs> Come at me. Come at me. <laughs> Last pass Best. and uh, Anathi both too. Uh, you know. They have very good explanations of the security they take to protect your backups so that even they can't see them. Uh, but, but you're backing it up in the cloud. So that's true. Um, if you're one of those trust no one people, then that's not going to be for you, but might be good to know for some people. Hey, Tom thanks. And I have been, oh, yes. Sorry. What? I was going to say, Tom and I have been fighting for years over LastPass and one password. We try to share passwords back and forth for things. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's a whole them. other situation. That's a whole other whole, thing. Yeah. You know, when, I, when I decided to, when, when I started uh, DTNS, Tom was like, got a LastPass account, right? And I was like, ugh, LastPass. I prefer one <laughs> password. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We can share passwords. Good. Fine. Fine. You two just have a little password sharing party password over party. there. <laughs> uh, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. Whether your LastPass... One password, Vim, Emacs, all, you're all welcome. Takes all kinds. Takes all kinds. Submit your stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. And uh, like you heard, we get posts in our Facebook group as well. Go check that out, facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. Now, our dear friend Nate Langson is back doing uh, the text message podcast with Ian Morris. And here's what they're talking about this week. Thanks, Tom. This week, one of Britain's biggest retailers stopped selling a brand of GPS smartwatches after a consumer advocacy group reported that the devices could be hacked to snoop on children. We go into the detail. Plus, I recently managed to use up 65 gigabytes of 4G data in a week during my honeymoon. Yeah, I was surprised too. So we've got a big section about what I'm calling the sync sync, or the syncing of your data plan thanks to device synchronization processes. It's not nearly as nerdy as it sounds. Actually, it is. But if you like that sort of thing, give episode 109 of Text Message a listen now at techpodcast.uk. Back to you. That is a bigger and bigger deal. Like, I had this on the plane where I bought, uh, a while back, I bought, like, 100 megabytes or whatever instead of a time frame. And I'm like, oh, crap, I got to turn everything off if I'm yeah. going to use this. So, yeah, check that out, techpodcast.uk. Thank you, Veronica Belmont. As always, what do you got going on? 
You can always check out my day job at growbot.io. I will pop up and ask you to give me any questions you may have in the bottom of the screen if you go to that website. Do, it's really you? It's really me, yeah. Nice. And I will immediately see it and respond to you. So people have done it on the show before. It's pretty funny. Cool. Um, and what else? Sword and Laser, swordandlaser.com. And finally, uh, like I said last time, new episodes of IRL are, are coming up very soon. And in fact, we are doing a follow-up episode, a mid-season episode where we catch up on some of the stories stories from season one, including Marcus Hutchins. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, he's not going to be on the show. He's not able to. Um, but we are going to talk about uh, a little bit about where he is at with his um, situation with the FBI. Yeah, very interesting. Check that out, IRLpodcast.org, coming soon. Uh, also, big thanks as we get close to the end of the month uh, to everybody who's supporting us at patreon.com slash DTNS. Uh, what we want every month, uh, if nothing else, is at least one patron more than last month. And right now, we have that, but we want to keep that through the end of the month. So hang in there, folks. Keep supporting us. And if you haven't supported us, consider it and go check out all the perks at patreon.com slash DTNS. And email us. Why don't you? Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We are live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC at alphageekradio.com and diamondclub.tv. Always nice to have the live people with us as well. Our website is dailytechnewsshow.com. Back tomorrow with Patrick Beja. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> I love that cackle. <laughs> By the way, um, I was paying very close attention to my battery through the, the entire show. And oh, I right. got 56%. Ooh, nice. I very only good. lost 20%. Nice. That's yeah. pretty efficient. How about that? And huh? you're streaming video, you know? So it wasn't like yeah. you were just, you know, How using your word program. <laughs> right. In fact, I probably have more programs open than I should have. But uh, yeah, yeah. But hey, you know, living on the edge. Nice. See, but you had that safety net. That's why it didn't crash. If you hadn't had the cord nearby, some weird process would have launched halfway through. I'm just saying. Right. Yeah. I like the I like the testing though. Titles. Going old man merit. Pixel two ain't afraid of no ghost. Veronica thinks Kapersky is irredeemable. Tom disagrees. Oh, it's all all of the. Yeah. Uh, Google Pixel burns out. The father, the son, and the Pixel ghost burn in. Baby burn. <laughs> OLD. OLED Inferno. You're distracting. The return of the patent wars. Don't cast Caspersions on our antivirus software. Caspersions. Caspersions. <laughs> Oikove. <laughs> That's funny. Where'd it go? Where is it? Which one? The Caspersians. Oh, it's a uh, number. Oh, it's uh, that needs to go. be higher. Yeah, it's. Where is it? Where is it? I can't find Hold it. Hold on! Don't no, you're distracting me. Uh, here, I'll vote it for it. Now it's no, no, it's not number three. And below, burn in, baby, burn OLED. Oh, one of the four. Go. There, it's it. the okay. Top. Did I vote for it? Oh, I already voted for it. Okay. Distracting whales. I like that. That's pretty funny. Distracting whales. Uh, what? Whale Z. techno. Reading with you. Oh, yeah. How many whale techno uh, links did we get in the chat room, by the way? I'm not in the chat room. Let me see. Where's my little window? Let's see. Do, do, do. Looks There's like Beatmaster. Like, I literally just Googled whale sounds dance music, and there's like yeah. an Enya whale song remix. Yeah, but Enya is not. Uh, she oh. is totally electronic music. Enya, and she, but she's not. Enya? No, Enya is an all whale song remix. I want Sandstorm with Whales is what I'm looking for. Yeah, see, like putting the whale in there makes it distracting, Gemma. So we're doing Caspersions? Is that, yes. is that what I'm hearing? Ooh, no. No? Ooh, no. Never mind.
Wait, you, I just heard two oohs. I was really hoping. I know, because I, I thought I understood something, and I did not understand it properly. Is that a pre-oo? Yeah. I, premature. A, premature understanding. Premature. Roger premature. says you're welcome. Two. Premature. <laughs> Sorry. It's oh, it's a mailbag Monday. I just I read your your description, day. Roger. Oh, do, what what should I have titled it? No, no, I I think that's better than I said. Fan mail Monday, which is not an alliteration. I didn't tell I didn't tell someone to write into Intercom. By the way, I should have mentioned all my coworkers see every message that goes into Intercom. So, so be nice. Like, Veronica told me to hashtag DTNS. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should Everyone remind should. them that I do a podcast during my working hours. Maybe yeah, but you're play. promoting them, so that's that's okay. Yeah. You can only talk to me if I then see in your events feed that you have downloaded Grobot into Slack. Ah, that's that's that's, that's the price the... you pay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's fair. Yeah. So we're going. Don't cast aspersions on our antivirus software. Yeah, yep. that's funny. Done. Okie dokie. Well, Okey do you need to get back to growing your bots? I do. I do. Ain't got to grow themselves. Grow Look how bots. far I've come now that I'm in a podcast room at the office. I know. And like the audio, no one can complain about my audio now. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they can, but. No. Uh, yeah. No. I won't allow it. <laughs> it's too good now. I liked it raw. deodorant today. I forgot. I forgot to wear it. I don't need TMI, 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 TMI. I forgot. You can't. My smell. <laughs> I shouldn't put that on the microphone for the next. No, no because someone's really probably going to say this nice. makes. I didn't fun. touch the microphone; it just got close. Okay, Veronica, were you okay. next? Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Well, I think Mailbag Monday is, is good. I like that. Not that we have a bag, or it's that it was actually mail. Bag. But it's an alliteration. Who doesn't love alliteration? I sure do. Uh, I'm a big fan. Yep. It is. It's a good thing to be a fan of. Affection. Alliteration affection. There's something very weird going on with my back when I stand for this show. Really? If my back isn't hurting. Hey, everyone. Do you love the fact Ooh. that DTNS... Sorry. Is it uh, does it pop or make kind of it's weird? A, it's a pop. It's a back pop. Huh. It's it's not painful, um, but it's like, and I mean, I stand. I bet it, it it's, only happens. It must be just sort of like there must be some might be, rigid way that I'm standing. You might be popping back into place. Yeah, I'm wondering Maybe. if it's a good thing. Like your body. So yeah. so one of the things my physical therapist has me doing is these. Um, these rolls where you put this roll behind your back and you, the, he calls them thoracic extensions. Um, <laughs> because my thoracic vertebrae were so short that I wanted to have extensions. So, um, no, that's not what it's for. It's just, it's for stretching out your, your vertebra. And it, I feel like that's what's happening to you is your vertebra just kind of stretching out and going, Oh, this is, we got some space, got room to move. Yeah, the, well, I do like I, the. I'm idea. going to assume it's a good thing. <laughs> Doesn't hurt, right? Not at all. No, yeah. I mean besides the fact that I'm just you know I'm a lazy person, so I'm like I'm tired of standing. But it's like no, I, I'm I'm not uncomfortable. I'm just like so used to sitting that. Do you see a chiropractor, or have you like on a regular basis, or no? No, I've never been to a chiropractor. Have I? I? No, no. Because every time I go, my back is all popped back into shape, according to him, mm. popped back into shape. I don't, not that I can think of. I don't think I've ever seen a chiropractor. <laughs> Even in the wild? <laughs> well, I probably saw one. I just didn't know that they were a chiropractor. You know? <laughs> the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, outside of their chiropractor costume. How would I know? <laughs> uh, I do remember going, this is such a weird memory, guys. It's just, I had forgotten all about it. I was, I once, I had a friend, a childhood friend, and for some reason, like the whole family went to a chiropractor and like they all got adjusted. And I was in the room with them. Like, I don't know, maybe like they were babysitting me or for the reason oh, I was there. Uh -huh. 
and like one after another you know they all got adjusted and you heard all the cracking and everything and oh crazy yeah like it they didn't do it because it's like i you know that i was just sort of there as a as a uh observer but yeah i remember thinking this is so strange like a family outing chiropractic family outing i used to go to a chiropractor in austin and then i stopped and i didn't notice any difference that's kind of how I feel about acupuncture. Mm. And um, I used to go once a week and I really liked it. Um, and I actually, uh, it was like a insomnia thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like it wasn't like I was in pain, physical pain, but it was, it's almost, it was more kind of like a mental wellness and it really helped. And then I stopped going and I kept sleeping. <laughs> so uh -huh. I, like, hmm, I don't know. You know, so. well, or, or maybe you only needed to go a couple of times to yeah. fix it. Yeah. And, it, you know, it, that could be it started because it was, I, I loved my acupuncturist. This was back in San Francisco, but it wasn't cheap, you know, and yeah, it was, it, I was paying a lot of, it wasn't covered by insurance or it was only partially or something like that. So eventually I was like, mm, I think I'm just going cause I like it. Not really because I need it. Mm. So it's been a while, but yeah, same idea, I guess interesting all right well our show is published so thank you all for watching thank you thank you goodbye thank you. live people bye everyone see you tomorrow to hear you tomorrow